In this lesson, we will examine some tips for maximizing your guesses on data sufficiency questions. Now, in an earlier lesson, we examined the elimination method for determining the correct answer. These same steps can also be used to help focus your guesses. Let's look at an example. In this question, we want to determine whether x is greater than 2. Now, statement 1 provides us with a very simple equation. Since we could solve this equation for x, we can see that statement 1 is sufficient. Now, statement 2 is not as simple. Let's say that we are unable to determine whether or not this statement is sufficient. At this point, we are unable to determine the correct answer, so we must guess. Now, keep in mind that we were able to determine that statement 1 is sufficient so we can limit our guesses to a few answer choices. Using the elimination method, we can see that when statement 1 is sufficient, we can eliminate answer choices B, C, and E. When we do this, we see that only two answer choices remain, so we will guess either A or D. So by knowing that statement 1 is sufficient, we were able to reduce our possible answer choices down to just two. Now, in case you're wondering, the correct answer here is A, and I will leave it to you to confirm this. Let's look at another example. Here, we want to determine whether X is greater than 3. Statement 1 tells us that X is greater than 0, so it is not sufficient. Now, statement 2 looks very confusing, so let's say that we are unable to determine whether or not this statement is sufficient. At this point, we must guess so what are the possible guesses? Well, the elimination method tells us that if statement 1 is insufficient, then we can eliminate answer choices A and D. When we do this, three answer choices remain, so we will guess B, C, or E. Now for the record, the correct answer here is C, and I will leave it to you to confirm this. Let's look at some more examples. For this question, let's say that we are able to determine that statement 2 is not sufficient, but we are unable to determine whether or not statement 1 is sufficient. Now that we must guess, we'll use the elimination method to help reduce our guessing options. When statement 2 is not sufficient, we can eliminate answer choices B and D. So we will guess A, C, or E. Okay, one more example. For this question, let's say that we are able to determine that statement 2 is sufficient, but statement 1 is a mystery. By the elimination method, we know that if statement 2 is sufficient, we can eliminate answer choices A, C, and E. So we will guess either B or D. Now as you can see, the elimination method is important for identifying your guessing options, so you must become very familiar with this method. Now there is one more tip you should know about. We'll illustrate this tip using the following example. Now in this question, we want to determine whether 2 to the power of k minus 1 is a prime number. Now this is a very difficult question and probably beyond the scope of the GMAT. So let's say that we are unable to determine whether or not statement 1 is sufficient. And let's also say that we are unable to determine whether or not statement 2 is sufficient. Now, under most circumstances, we would not be able to eliminate any of the answer choices before guessing. However, notice that statement 1 and statement 2 provide the same information. Statement 1 tells us that k is a prime number, and statement 2 tells us that k has exactly two positive divisors. Well, if a number has exactly two positive divisors, then that number must be prime. Now we have a nice rule for this situation, and it says, if two statements provide the same information, then the correct answer must be either D or E. Now this should make some sense to us. If both statements provide the same information, then the correct answer cannot be A, B, or C. So for this question, we should guess either D or E. Now just for fun, let's determine the correct answer to this question. To do this, we'll use the table method. We'll choose values of k that are prime, and then using these values, we'll ask the target question, is 2 to the power of k minus 1 a prime number? So if k must be prime, then k could equal 2. 
if k equals 2, then 2 to the power of k minus 1 will equal 3, in which case the answer to the target question is yes. Now if k must be prime, k could also equal 11. If k equals 11, then 2 to the power of k minus 1 will equal 2047. Now 2047 is not prime since it is equal to 23 times 89. So when k equals 11, the answer to the target question is no. Since we are unable to determine whether or not 2 to the power of k minus 1 is prime, the two statements must be insufficient, which means the correct answer here is E. So to summarize, if you are forced to guess on a data sufficiency question, be sure to know your guessing options, which can be deduced by using the elimination method. Also, if the two statements provide identical information, then the correct answer must be either D or E.